Tommy Hatch, a hoodlum and public nuisance from out of town, started a chain of events one afternoon that had the Chicago police over a barrel for a week. Keep your hands up on that desk, Kennedy. What'd you do that for? You didn't reach your mouth. Shut up. My name is Frank Ballinger, Detective Lieutenant M Squad, a special detail of the Chicago Police. If I had known what I was getting into or how close I'd get to Tommy Hatch, I'd have taken my vacation instead of checking in with the boss. Well, you got a witness says you were in the room when Kennedy got the slugs. No, you haven't, because I wasn't in his room. I'm strictly in the laundry business. Yeah? Ten arrests last year, two for shootings. And... No convictions, Captain, no convictions. We can prove you were in the building. Sure you can. Down on the third floor, five guys just told you I was with them all the time. Go ahead and arrest me. Hey, wait a minute. We don't have a case against you, Tommy. Your alibi stands, huh? Whoever named me was lying. But, uh, the Kennedy's boys would be looking for me. He just said you were in his room, so what he got to be afraid of? Well, you got nothing to worry about. We'd keep an eye on you till we get enough evidence. Wait outside. You want to take me into protective custody? Outside. The elevator operator was afraid to identify him, but he said that he saw two men outside of Big Ned Kennedy's office, and one of the descriptions fits Tommy. Yeah, he's our man. Suppose we do turn him loose, you know, afraid as he is, it uh, might help to break him. Yeah, but if he gets shot down, you'll hear loud screams of police indifference. Yeah. You can't let that happen, Frank. You gotta stick awful close to him. I gotta stick awful close to him. And it's your idea. You know, to weaken nailing, we're his insurance policy, and it's up to you to see that it doesn't lapse. You're kidding. He wasn't kidding. The three of us became bodyguards for a dangerous character. And Tommy tried to find safety in crowds and threw parties to keep up his courage. It was a 24-hour watch and no sign of him breaking down, scared as he was. Now he was living it up in a joint up on Rush Street. Hiya, Sam. He's inside. Just a few of his intimate friends. You could take all of his intimate friends and squeeze them in a matchbox. Yeah. You gonna join the fun, Lieutenant? Yeah. Look, Sergeant Harris is on his way over to relieve you, so stick around on the shows. Huh? Okay. It goes off when it hits your stomach. <laughs> now this makes the, the gourmet in me begin to flip just thinking about this recipe. Now watch. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Now nobody talk. Wait. Quiet. Don't talk. You can get hurt at this point. <laughs> Got here, huh? With a surprise packet? I swear it's a frame. What's all the noise? I told everybody to shut up. Why, you rock? Come on, knock it off. Knock it off. Or you'll end up being his cellmate. So help me. Somebody planted sure, it. You're gonna play on your friend's back, huh? What do you got? Here, just take him downtown. I'll prefer charges. Let me there. settle. I can handle him. Look, you get your hat, you're going home. <laughs> okay, crumbs, the party's over. Go on, you heard him. <laughs> Harris and I were 
watching Tommy's apartment house when I noticed two Underworld characters drive by. Ollie Purvis at the wheel and Harry Lionel. Been there since last night, you say? In shifts. They've got Tommy's joints staked out front and back. That won't stop us. Tommy's gone too far this time. He can't jump any of my boys and get away with it. Maybe those cops can't nail him, but just watch me. You gonna pull him in? Well, four. If we pulled everybody who had a grudge against Tommy Hatch, we'd have to be the straights. I think they spotted us. Fine. Hey, look, Harris, we're not here to force anybody into a tent. We're just here to scare them off. What's the matter, Tommy? Gone chicken? Since when did you have to run to the fuzz for protection? I don't know what you're talking about. Who is this, anyway? Never mind who it is. Just take a look out your front window and then tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. came from the direction of Tommy's windows. <laughs> Hiya, copper. I thought I kept you. It's 52 seconds. I could have been killed. 52 seconds since I fired them shots. You think you're pretty smart, don't you? Boy, I hope you don't have a permit for this guy. <laughs> Do I look like a sap? Let's not go into that one. Boy, you must have piled up a flock of demerits. I'm sticking you with a crummy assignment like this. No, I've had the experience. I used to babysit for a gorilla at the zoo. Oh, very funny. Are you supposed to tag along wherever I go? Is that the routine? That's the routine. Well, you got a chaperone me, you got to dress the part. Go around in clothes like that, you'll depreciate property value. Yeah, well, I'll break out the tails when I usher your funeral. Oh, now, you know you don't really mean that. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. Don't just stand there. Make yourself useful. See who it is. Tommy Hatch. Oh, well, he's in the other room changing. Tommy! Come out here. Look out for her. She's Kennedy's wife. See if she's got a gun. Well, I'm a police officer. The police, what can you do? Nothing. I didn't kill Big Ned. Now, I don't want any trouble with her. Get her out of here. Mrs. Kennedy, nothing can be gained by coming here. I wanted to see him. The kind of animal that killed my husband. You'll never be able to clean out his kind. And nobody else ever does much about it. Talk, investigations, cleanups. And he's still there, laughing at us. You're even protecting him now. No, Mrs. Kennedy, we were watching him till we find what we're looking for. All I know is my husband's dead. And he's still alive and doing business. He'll kill again. Why isn't he in prison? Why? Why? Because we don't have any evidence. Witnesses refuse to come forward and testify. I know. His kind threaten and terrorize. Only Ned wouldn't let him get away with it. I have to listen to this. And go on, throw her out. Other thieves like you want your spot. They'd even kill you just to shut your big mouth. You're even trouble to your own kind. I want you punished for Ned. Uh, I've had enough of this. If you don't throw her out, I'm going to call the precinct, charge you with disturbing the peace. I'm locked up. It's the only thing they're afraid of. Not to be free, to have their own way. Well, you better let me have that, Mrs. Kennedy. He deserves killing. Yeah, but you're not like him. That's better. I guess you'll have to get him. If you're lucky. After that, I had to drive with Tommy to the Club Five Aces, his favorite hangout. Oh, hi, everybody. Well, what's on the menu for today, huh? Hello, Dad. Hi. Hey, Mike, fix me up something extra special, will you? Say, uh, shouldn't you be at rehearsal? Look, Mike, tell me a favor, will you, Tommy? 
Take your business someplace else. <laughs> What's the matter? You afraid my blood's gonna get spilled all over your carpet? Not a chance. Not with Chicago's finest watching after me. Darling. Darling, please be careful. If anything should happen... Sure, sure, sure. No, nothing's gonna happen. Uh, how long is your sister gonna practice today? Well, I don't know. She has to be ready for next week. Tommy, I wish you'd stay home. Not go on the street. You gonna rehearse today? Mm-hmm. I'll rehearse. with me today, huh? Your sister's not going to have lunch with you today. Your sister's just leaving. Oh, no, no, no. Why do you always act like that, Molly? Every time I show up, you take off. You know, it's not nice. I wouldn't have it any other way. Now, what do you want, huh? Just tell me. Anything you say. Get lost. That's your doing. You know, I recommend you have a little talk with Molly. Either she sweetens up in her attitude toward me, I'm going to get the idea that I'm not welcome around the Peters family. Hey, oh, I'm feeling the mood of a steak. Let's go on downtown. Right. Hey, Frank. Let's put out a bomb in Tommy's car. You know to buy him downtown? They're on their way. Let's take a look. All right, everybody back. Come on. This is no joke. Those demolition boys are in charge. Well, it's old hat to them. Yeah, but one mistake, I don't even have an old hat. Too bad we couldn't get a look at the guy okay, who planted it. Come on, snap it up. I ain't got all day to wait. Up. Look, you guys been on the boat. What in the hell? I said there's a couple of men out there risking their lives for a guy like you. I go, cop. Shut up. Bend in the dry goods. Either you let go, Ballinger, I start hollering. Believe me, my voice carries. If so much as bruise me, I'll have that badge of yours stuffed and knotted, and you know it. Three days had passed and Tommy was still alive. We were getting nowhere fast. And we hadn't turned up any witness to put him at the scene of the Kennedy shooting. All of which left me with him still on my hands. No. You gotta get me off the hook, Captain. If I spend one more day with that guy, I'm gonna kill him myself. No, no, you won't. I know this is no picnic, Frank, but I'm counting on you. Captain, I'm asking you to relieve me. Well, the answer is still no. You're under order, so get on with the job. Well, I always can resign, you know. Now, wouldn't that be a feather in Tommy's cap? I was stuck but good with this one. But the captain didn't say I couldn't try to get some results on my own, so I went to see Karen. Believe me, I realize how serious things are, and don't think I haven't tried to get him to go away. It was all hard. Very hard. What makes you think I haven't? The way you feel about him, maybe you want him hanging around. I don't want him dead. Tell me, uh, how does a girl like you go about falling in love with a Tommy Hatch? I've had that said to me before. You know, it's really none of your business. If you're keeping him here in danger, it is. I'm not doing that. Well, one angle could look like it, to make sure he gets knocked off. It so happens that I'm in love with him. Even though you know what he is, huh? And the way he chases your sister. Oh, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you know, I know he's had lots of girls. But I know he cares for me in his own funny way. You don't believe me, do you? I think you ought to know that he's my husband. He uh, lives on the other side of town. He wants it that way. And if he wants it, it's okay with me. This is Tommy Hatch, huh? Wow. It was one of those things. You face a blank wall. No break had come our way. Nobody would talk to identify Tommy as Kennedy's killer. But I had that old feeling. Something was stirring. And in my line, you know it when you feel it. I'm not wasting my time. Listen.
Listen, just looking at you, Molly, is enough. I'm that far gone now. How do I prove it to you? Go to China and stay there. You don't mean that. Break it up, Tommy. I'm sorry, Karen. I guess I couldn't handle him after all. That's all right, Molly. Well, the beef's all in the family. And I wouldn't listen to anybody. Me and I've been around. I thought you had one drop of decency left in you. Any sister of yours is a friend of mine. Stop it. Stop it. Sorry. Boy, don't give me an excuse or I'm going to flatten you. Now, let's go. I said let's go. Take your hands off me, Purvis. Will you get out of here the next time I see you? I'm going to run you and I'll beat it. Well, come on, let's go. <laughs> And you're going to stay right here, even if we have to take all your clothes and throw them in the lake. We're not dropping you till we have a case. You ain't going to get lucky, because I'm innocent. You can't find witnesses or something I didn't do. You wait till they realize that we can protect them. They'll turn up. Why don't you wise up, Tommy? You'd be safer in prison. You know the word's out for you. I mean, you are my protection, the city of Chicago. When this rap blows over, you're going to have egg all over your face. Don't bet on it. private number. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm kind of sorry about the way I acted and what I said, too. You want to see me? <laughs> sure, honey. Sure, just, just let me shake these protection boys of mine. I'll be right over. Keep hiding. I, I've got to have protection. I thought you'd have Tommy in a cell by now. Lock me up. Hold me as a material witness or something. Well, if I talk, the elevator operator, he'll back me up. He's scared, too. All right, you'll have all the protection you want. Big Ned Kennedy, he didn't have a gun. Tommy just let him have it. Were you in the room? No, I was standing in the hall with Tommy. I begged him not to lose his head. Will you swear to that in court? Locate Ballinger. Have the men at the offspring Tommy Hatch down here. Thanks, Sweeney. Harris just phoned in. Tommy gave him the slip. Oh, we had all the exits covered. They don't know yet. He was seen in the basement. It was right after he got a call on the house phone. Who phoned him? A woman. A Miss Peters. We're giving it to Ballinger now. All right. Yeah, I got it. Tell Sergeant Harris to meet me at the Club Five Aces. Out. I tell you, I didn't phone him. I haven't even been near a phone. Well, he must have had a pretty good reason to duck his protection. A reason to say as good as, uh, a woman. You think I tricked him out? So that somebody could get at him? Is that it? Well, you had plenty of reason. In the way he was treating you and the way he was treating your sister. Reasons? Sure. Sure, I've got reasons. But I couldn't even lure Tommy across the street. There was a time. What? You think I turned on Tommy because he went for my sister? Well, I'll tell you how low I've sunk. I'd have given Molly to him. Molly. Let's go.
an ambulance. Get him out of here. You coppers out on the street. I got the girl in front of me. No tricks now, or I'll blow her head off. Okay, I heard you. I'm going out. We're coming down. I didn't get, if I didn't get Tommy over here and alone, they'd kill me. That's all right. You're safe now. Come on, sit down. They made me phone. Somehow they knew, they knew Tommy would come running if... we turned up, placed him on the scene, and named him as the man who shot Big Ned Kennedy. So Tommy went to the death house. He had smeared the law and forced it to protect him, but he got a square deal from the law. That's what I like about my town. Tune in again next week for another exciting story from the files of M-Squad.